Um, my name's Nick. Uh, I'm a software engineer for Marmalade. Um, I'm doing this session on uh, native app porting and rapid 2D game development with Marmalade. I'm going to apologize a bit. My voice is not very good this morning. Um, like many of you, I probably stayed out a little bit too late. So if it starts to dip, um, I'll start typing. But it should be fine. Um, I've been to quite a few of these BlackBerry events. Some of you, I'm not sure, may have seen me at odd jam events around the world. Um, I've basically been a bit of a BlackBerry groupie for the last six months, um, turning up and helping out. Um, it's quite nice to be here demoing when like, the devices are out and our software support is all done and dusted for BlackBerry 10. Um, what I'm going to do in this session is basically a little bit of an overview of what we do, um, what Marmalade does, how you can use it to build apps fast and easily um, and support BlackBerry 10 for people who aren't too familiar with us. Um, then I'm going to do a little run through of um, building and deploying something for BlackBerry 10. And then the second half is going to be talking about Quick, which is um, a new sort of rapid 2D dev tool that we have. So we're a very much a C++ kind of native low level kind of uh, environment for working in. Um, but we do get a lot of people requesting for high level functionality for Quick 2D app building or prototyping on top of Marmalade. So We've started building that, and what you'll see that's quite interesting about it is it's um, quite sort of open and extensible. So it's not just uh, you know a simple framework that you can use instead of Marmalade. You can use it alongside. You can sort of rip projects apart, add new things in, and support pretty much everything that we do in the main SDK. Um, I'm going to do questions at the end. So if anyone has any questions about anything at all, then please fire away. So. Uh, Start off with a quick sort of what, what is Marmalade? Um, we're basically uh, an SDK for building native apps cross platform. So you take standard C code, build it once, push it out to iPhone, Android, Blackberry, uh, desktop, smart TVs. We're quite well known for games. So a lot of people think of us as basically uh, a games engine, which isn't strictly true. Uh, we let you run any, any code and we support a lot of open standards. So basically, you can build apps and games, and you can see on here there's things from like little small indie titles like uh, Catch the Monkey down the bottom up to things like Cut the Rope, Draw Something, uh, Call of Duty Zombies, Lara Croft, and there's things like there's a flight app there um, for planning uh, plane routes, uh, a TV guide, I think, um, kids', kids uh, sort of coloring book, interactive coloring book. So the point is that basically um, we just let you take code and get it to run. That's basically our job. Um, the sort of things we do are basically um, let you target all platforms for a single code base, have a sort of a one-click deployment system. So once you've built your code once, you can just pick like BlackBerry 10, iPhone, iPad, Android, hit go, get a build. You don't have to worry about um, how that works, basically. You don't need to install uh, platform tools. So you don't need the BlackBerry 10 SDK. You don't need the iPhone SDK. You don't need a Mac to build for iPhone. Um, we're doing Windows Phone 8 support at the moment as well. And once that's done, You'll be able to do that from a, a Mac as well. You won't need any of the Windows 8 tooling, which is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty messy, basically, at the moment, if you're trying to build uh, for mobile and trying to use uh, standard code like OpenGL or sort of C++ standard libraries, even. Um, and our basic job is to make, make your coding more productive. So we make it so that you, know, you have a simple project that runs your, uh, runs your app, builds your app. And you don't have to worry about any of the background stuff behind it. Um, which basically means you can spend more time actually like working on your game. So less time, you know, fiddling and bug fixing, and more time tweaking and adding like sort of shine and polish for the users. Uh, platforms we do so as of our, uh, our release last year, Marmalade 6.2, we've now got BlackBerry Playbook, BlackBerry 10 completely supported. All of the iOS and Android devices. I think we support Android up from basically version two and upwards now. Um, Windows. So there's Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 there, which are sort of in development, and then um, some smart TV platforms. And we're going to be doing a few more of those this year, um, which I can't really talk about at the moment. But um, there's lots of work going on for like, new, new and interesting platforms for different sort of sectors. Um, and just a sort of quick overview of, of the, the features. Um, some of the nice things are things like, for example, on Windows Phone 8, you can code with Marmalade in um, OpenGL, whereas it doesn't actually support OpenGL at all. So we have a, a layer for running. Um, GL on top of DirectX, for example, um, things like letting you sign for a, uh, iPhone on a, on a PC. So basically, we've ported all of the open source tools from Apple, so you don't actually need to touch their tooling itself. Um, things like with BlackBerry, we ship all the BlackBerry signing tools 
which they nicely let us include in the SDK. So you don't have to go through the hassle of setting up repeatedly with like one SDK and another SDK. You'll see um, as you play around with um, Marmalade, if, I mean, I'm, I'm sure some of you have been to the native C++ sessions here. Our native SDK and BlackBerry's native SDK are very, very similar. Um, there are some APIs where basically you could do search replace um, to port from one to the other. Um, and it's basically because both of our two companies have come from the approach of let's, let's, make, um, let's support things that people want to use rather than let's build our own really proprietary tool chain and force people to adapt to it. So um, you can port into Marmalade from BlackBerry 10 and then back out if you don't like it. It's actually, uh, I mean, not what I should be saying, but it's like a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Um, how the tool chain works. Basically, I don't know if people ever really look at underneath, but it's quite, it's quite nice to understand what we're doing so you can see like how your code works and how it interrupt, uh, interrupts with the device. So we basically have a project format. We ship um, a load of scripts that power all of your builds um, and a compiler. Um, and you can basically run that project through command line or an IDE as a front end. It builds a single app binary. And then that app binary basically has no platform code in it at all. So there's no Android code, no BlackBerry 10 code. It's uh, an identical binary that's going to run on all the platforms. It's just got a load of holes, basically, for things like anything the OS would do, like open a file, uh, allocate some memory, uh, write up to like open the uh, gallery view to get me a picture and give me a handle back to the picture. So we basically abstract all that stuff with a nice low-level abstraction API. Um, and when you compile your app, it's not in there. And the great thing about that is <coughs> if we, um, say, add a new platform, you don't need to actually even rebuild your app. That's just going to work. We just, you just have to download the new SDK and it'll run. If you use um, the ID, so we have a desktop simulator. So basically, uh, you can build for x86 or ARM. Uh, the x86 will just be faster on a desktop, but we support ARM emulation. Um, and basically, you can run your build on the desktop with like full tools to change things like screen resolution, keyboard input, um, artificial accelerometer input, uh, multi-touch, that kind of stuff. Um, so you can test your builds on a desktop. We really encourage people to do a lot of desktop testing before going onto device, especially if you're working in a, a very cross-platform way. It's not a great idea to just go straight for one device, um, but you will. I mean, like how BlackBerry have given out all of the dev alphas to everyone, you will want to test on a device eventually anyway, because um, basically there's always things that you don't foresee in terms of performance or you know, how you want to interact with the, the OS in terms of how the user's expecting to, to behave with gestures and things like that. And then how um, putting on a device works is basically we have this thing, the deploy tool. Um, it literally just takes this single app binary and a pre-built um, binary for each platform. So we build what we call a loader. So it's a BlackBerry one. It's, it's uh, built against the BlackBerry 10 SDK. Um, there's an Android one built against uh, Android S SDK and NDK. There's an iOS one built on a Mac against the latest version of iOS and Xcode. Um, and basically, the deploy tool just mashes them together. Um, to, to plug the gaps between the API calls. I say mashes them together because it works very differently on different platforms. Um, we do a lot of work to guarantee um, performance and that behavior is identical. So for example, we control memory allocation ourselves so that every memory allocation is identical no matter which device you're running on. You won't get different like fragmentation um, or different stacks and so on from one device to the next. Um, but the implementation at the end there does vary a little bit. So for example, uh, our standard approach is to have um, uh, allocatable uh, memory at runtime, which we drop the app into and launch, but you can't do that on iPhone. So we basically link the two bits physically together into one big app. Um, and then the final thing is, last year we had, um, <coughs> sorry, my voice is probably going to go. We had um, a single BlackBerry loader, which we called a QNX loader, um, and that supported uh, both um, the playbook and BlackBerry 10 in its beta state. And as BlackBerry 10 was polished and started to diverge more and more from the playbook version of QNX, we split that. So in our 6.2 XDK, we basically have two loaders. So at deploy time, you just pick which one you want. Um, and that's the same as you know, if you were working natively on uh, BlackBerry, you would basically use two completely different SDKs to build your app. So it's all pretty straightforward. Um, people find it a bit odd because the way we work is very different to a lot of tool chains will basically have a per platform version of the tool chain that, say, if you were doing iOS development, you would integrate it into Xcode on your Mac. Um, if you were doing BlackBerry 10 development, you would integrate it into uh, Eclipse, um, Mementix. Um, we basically go from the completely opposite point of view of like use our tools, build the thing, and then at the end, it turns it into a, 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 a sort of a store compliant build for that device. Um, and a little look at sort of what's in a Marmalade app. So um, we've got the abstraction there at the bottom, which is basically giving you um, a cross-platform API. So 
things like all the OS commands that I said, also the um, abstraction for GL and DirectX. One thing we do now is um, for our PC support, we actually run OpenGL on top of DirectX as well, because basically even in uh, 2013, PC support for OpenGL drivers is rubbish. So um, actually guaranteeing that your, your GL app will run on a PC is, um, is pretty hard to do. So instead, we took the slightly extreme approach of building GL on top of DirectX, which turned out to be really, really handy for supporting Windows Phone. Um, and then the bit here with the dotted lines is basically showing that all of the stuff in that black box is your own code, basically. So we're black box at the bottom, um, controlling like you know this uh, the, the abstraction API. But above that, we have like our own uh, some middleware software for games, uh, 2D and 3D games, um, other middleware from other people, third-party stuff, extensions. Uh, we provide implementations of C and C++ standard libraries, um, things like Boost and that kind of thing. Um, but those are all basically just available for you to include or not include, and they'll compile away to nothing if you don't use them. So your games don't bloat. You're not building in hundreds of megs of um, a massive engine to run your app on top of. So I'm just going to show you very quickly setting up and running something on a dev alpha. Um, I thought a nice thing to do might be to pick something unnecessarily complex. So. Uh, I'm going to open Cut the Rope, which I have a checkout of from somewhere that I don't exactly remember where, and I should probably delete it. But uh, So this is a build of Cut the Rope, build for, um, I think this was essentially meant for uh, BlackBerry and Symbian back in the day. Uh, but it'll, through Marmalade, it'll run on anything. Um, this is our MKV project file here. If I double click that, on my machine, it's set up to use uh, Visual Studio as my uh, front end, so it basically builds a Visual Studio project, pulls in all of the information from the MKB. So the MKB's just got things like um, things like source code files, assets. Uh, I mean, Cut the Rope is quite big, but it's got um, deployment information, that sort of thing. Um, and then if I wanted to run on the desktop, I can just build the uh, x86 version, which uh -huh. I built earlier, but I built the uh, release one, so let me just stop that. So, and actually, I've not run this, so I'm hoping it's going to run nicely and not have assets that I didn't copy or something like that. Um, but basically, that's our desktop simulator, so you can do things like configure surface. I could switch to um, BlackBerry 10 resolution if I wanted. Um, you can do things like play with the accelerometer artificially. You can plug in uh, devices to control it. Um, and this is uh, just an x86 build of the same version you're going to have on your game. So I just kill that. To put on a device, you just build for ARM. So imagine I've just built that. Hit run. We have a nice deploy tool, which basically lets you configure things to your heart's content. And then you just pick platforms. So for example, if I want to do BlackBerry 10, tick that. Android, iPhone, and so on. Uh, I'm just going to do a BlackBerry 10 build. So uh, this device also got wiped this morning nicely. So I'm just going to set it back up. So basically, we sh as I said, we ship all of the um, tools now with the BlackBerry SDK. About two or three months ago, we didn't do this. And you basically had to install the BlackBerry 10 SDK and go through steps of um, getting your signing stuff set up. So um, I've set up signing on this machine already. But it's basically just a, a case of running a couple of command lines. Um, so if I wanted to sign it, I would just run this to get my signing things. I'm going to build a debug token. Hoping there's some internet here. Cool. And then uh, you'll notice up here, this is basically my device info. So uh, that's the idea of this BlackBerry 10. I'll just push that onto the device. Tip package on there. Um, 
And that's basically it. This will take a little while because um, Cut the Rope is like 200 megs of textures or something, something ridiculous. So that'll probably take about a minute. But that really basically is it. So there's no additional setup of, you know, installing any extra tools, um, stuff you have to get off the device really now. It's basically just a case of uh, installing that token and then hitting build. Um, and in our next version, we're going to be streamlining that a bit more so that the deployer will just have a set up my battery button. You don't have to touch command line, do anything at all. Um, but for the moment, that's one little tiny hurdle you have to go through. That is a really, really big game. <coughs> what I might do while that inst installs is if anyone has any questions about any of the like tooling and BlackBerry 10 setup or how we support that, then feel free to fire away now rather than the end. No, nope, cool. Okay, and there we go on the device. Um, that doesn't line up properly because I haven't updated the assets. It was never designed for a phone this big, but as you can see, the UI basically scales really nicely. The video plays. I'm a pretty rubbish at cut the rope, but this is about the first I've ever got. But that's basically it. And, and getting a project up and running on a device is, is pretty much that simple these days. What I'm going to do is shut this guy down and uh, get on with quick. So um, yeah, what, I should, what I should add is there's loads of information online for setting stuff up. If I just switch back to this guy. Um, online documentation run throughs. So we've got online documentation, walkthroughs, there's some online webinars of us going through using setting up the signing tools, how to get everything going. So all the information is on our website, um, madewithmarmalade.com, um, and all the additional stuff I'm going to talk about for quick after this is also available to download there. So it's like a one nice portal for everything. So quick, I don't know if anyone in the room has actually used Marmalade quick. A quick show of hands, anyone? No, brilliant. So <coughs> this means I won't bore you for the next 20 minutes, basically. Um, Quick is essentially a rapid 2D uh, game API at the moment for um, building games on top of Marmalade. Um, and as we work on it more, it's going to get additional tooling and become more of like a fully featured sort of editor as well. But at the moment, it's essentially um, a high level framework for uh, writing 2D games in a scripting language that run on top of um, C code that you can edit yourself. So it's a high level 2D API. Um, the basic idea is do more with less code. So you want to get access to low-level C++ stuff, even with you know, simple 2D games usually. But you don't want to have to necessarily code all of that stuff for all of your games. And also, you might want to do things like rapid prototyping. So Quick's really good as a tool for throwing together an app quickly to, to prove your ideas, like if you're not a developer and you just want to tell the people what you want. Um, and then also, you can use it right up to fully featured games. So we've got um, a game being built by a team coming out next week, I think, with Quick as a sort of demo of like, what it can do. And that was built entirely with like, the beta version of the SDK, bugs and all. Um, but it's a really nice, really nice game, runs really nicely. Um, I've also been building some games. I'm going to, at the end of this, show you my, my beautiful game, um, just to give you an idea of things you can do with a very small amount of code. Um, the idea is uh, you write your apps to start with in Lua. So Lua is um, a scripting language, um, like sort of uh, things like Python, for example. Um, it's used a lot in the games industry for small bits of script to run things. So it's quite familiar to some people who, who want to push together scripts quickly for games. Um, and then underneath Lua, we use popular C++ frameworks, so Cocos 2D primarily for the rendering. Um, one thing, if you didn't know, you can just use Cocos 2D on Marmalade as it is. So if you want to write an app in Cocos 2D, rather than building versions for different um, OSs and working in different languages, uh, you can just get a Marmalade project to include Cocos 2D um, and then just code away, use the deploy tool as usual to press one button, push to Android, push to iPhone. Um, we have quite a few people actually who sort of port games from Cocos 2D, uh, the Objective-C version, over to the C++ version and then just use Marmalade to push them out. So 
an example of some simple code from Quick. This is basically display a, a label, um, a texture button, and when you click it, it'll change color. Um, if you do some coding, you'll understand it. It's, I mean, you can basically use Quick without really even knowing it, most of the API. That you, can, you can just guess. So it's just uh, creating a label uh, with a font, which is, uh, has an automatic font by default, adding a button, um, and that's basically what you get from that bit of code. Um, to do something a bit more complex, we can add some touch events. So um, this thing here is adding some uh, objects, basically, as sprites, which then collide with each other. So the great thing with Quick is it uses Box2D underneath, um, but you can imp integrate more um, physics engines if you wanted to. Um, so you can just literally do like sprite add physics, um, and that's it, or physics add node, actually. Um, so that basically will build you something a bit like this with um, a whole load of objects that bounce off each other. So implementing like a simple sort of um, Angry Birds type uh, physics app you can do with like literally that much code. Um, what I'm going to do actually is <coughs> switch away from here and just show you, some, show you some quick running. Yeah, so um, what we've done with Quick is to make it easier to use as well, we've basically built a new little front end. So you get a launch pad like this. Um, if you've used any of our web integration stuff, it's basically the same tool, but um, augmented to do Quick instead. I think repurposing is the word I should use. Um, but basically, rather than having to play around with text files for projects, IDs for editing, anything like that, um, by default, you can just create a project, open up the Lua code, and start coding straight away. You can then, if you want, pull it apart and play around with the inside. So I'll do that right at the end. But to start with, I'm just going to build a simple app so I can do new project. Uh, I'm going to call my project Balls. Because it's going to have a load of balls in it. Uh, hit build. So what it's doing here in those like couple of seconds there is it's basically created your normal Marmalade app. It's built a project file for you. It's compiled um, or pulled in a pre-compiled um, quick uh, application for you, um, so you never actually even have to see any of that C++ stuff if you don't want to. Uh, I'll set up a few things for my device later, so that's my company. That's my uh, ID for BlackBerry signing, basically. Um, and if I just hit launch straight away, you get a trace view, which is a bit big for my laptop. Just pop that over there. Uh, and this is my app with no code, nothing interesting in it yet. So if I then hit open folder, you'll see this is basically all the stuff it's pre-built for you. So there's your normal Marmalade project called Balls. Um, this is where it's built all of the files and stuff for you. If I just hop into resources, this is our pre-built bit of Lua code. So it's just got a nice little hello world, bit of printing there, but get rid of that. I've cheated a little and pre-written some code. So this should be fa fairly obvious what's going on. So basically, adding a background, so I'm just going load a, load a sprite, um, adding a ground object at the bottom with another sprite, um, and then I've got a, a touch event, which basically goes, if touch begins, then creates a ball sprite um, and anchor it at a certain position. So the, the, the base is the bottom for when we hit the floor later. Um, and then I've added, so that's basically, that's what you have to do to set up touch. Uh, one thing I'll do before I forget is I've got some pre-rendered textures here. So I'll just drop those into my app. And just reload the app, and there it is. Um, at the moment, you basically just press Control-R to reload. Uh, in the future version, what we're planning to do is basically have like live updates. So if you want, you can just edit the Lua code, save, and your app will rebuild itself straight away. Um, Quick at the moment is in a uh, beta phase, which is ending next week. So you can go to the website now, download it, play around with it. It's got a couple of little bugs, a couple of little features that we haven't implemented. But basically, we've built a bunch of games while building Quick. So all of the feedback from those, all of the things that people wanted are all going in. Um, there's loads of new stuff in the release version. So. Um, Look, look, off, look for that, and also once that's out, we'll be building more and more on it, so there'll be more tools, more things for editing. Um, and what you'll really want to do at the end of the day is to actually play with the C++ stuff and pull more things in. Uh, I'll add a little bit more to this, so... Uh, I can add some physics. 
So after I've created my ball, give it some physics. Oop. Little beta bug there. Reload. And then let's improve this a little bit. So I'm going to add an event for basically when things hit the ground and an event for when things hit each other eventually. So let's drop that at the bottom. Um, and one thing, even though it's Lua, Lua basically takes care of all of the garbage collection for you, so you don't have to destroy objects. They basically fall out of scope once there's no longer a reference to them. But like any programming, if you want something to be fast and responsive, you should do a little bit of work to, to clean things up. So um, this remove from parent here basically just says, pull this object out of the scene. Once you've done that, if you get rid of any references to it, it'll, it'll just be cleaned away for you. And there's loads of things you can do to change garbage collection, to improve how it works, to explicitly um, cool garbage collection on objects to clean them up. So um, it's designed so that out of the box, you can just code away and not really understand how that works. But if you want, you can optimize it and you can make sure that things are running properly. So you'll see this won't run very fast because I've got loads of debugging turned on. Uh, and I think that looks reasonable. Just restart that completely. Ooh, missed something. Um, and that's basically all you need to do to, to implement some simple physics. And there's loads of stuff under the hood you can do to play around with that, add more stuff to it. Uh, the last little bit I'm going to do is just a tiny bit of code to uh, add different different textures. So drop that in here. reasonable. Um, and that's basically, that's basically quick in a, in a two minute demo. Um, and our idea is we want to push it further and further, introduce more things, try and build it into like the best sort of open source, easy to use 2D um, game engine and tool chain basically. If you use Cocos 2D, if you're used to working with it, it's not really a games engine, it's more of a a fancy rendering library with various things pulled in to turn it into a, a fairly complex to use games engine. We've done a lot of work to basically simplify all of that. So through the Lua code, you can just you know add, add things instantly without really having to worry about like how you're building the scene graph and how you're wor worrying about like object behavior and uh, resource management internally. So um, how, how it actually works, uh, basically, there's a CM implementation of Lua, so the fact that Marmalade can basically support most C, C++ code bases, we just took Lua, built a C++ version of Lua, dropped it into the app. Um, it's then got API bind bindings to um, the C++ implementations of the app. So things like Cocos 2D, Box 2D, SQLite, there is a, just pretty much a raw Lua version of all of those APIs where appropriate. Um, and there's actually a script that will just build you um, bindings between the two. Um, and then on top of that, there's some higher level Lua stuff that gives you the, the sort of improved, better than Cocos 2D functionality. Uh, what's really cool is that basically you can just take something in C++, run that script, and you've suddenly got um, a, a, a quick Lua version of that script. Um, and what we're doing with uh, Quick is we're basically um, open sourcing it. So everything in it, apart from Marmalade underneath, is open source. Um, we'll be adding support for lots of standard stuff from Cocos 2D, but also proprietary Marmalade stuff like our game center implementation, or uh, score loop, or uh, things like uh, advertising and banners and stuff like that. So you'll just be able to go like my game dot add banner. You suddenly got advertising um, just straight through Lua, Lua code without having to worry about even how the advertising service works. But if you've got an ad service you really like, um, you can just bring that in yourself and make a wrapper for it in a couple of buttons and a little bit of tweaking. Um, 
What Quick does after that is basically um, there is a, a pre-built Quick app, which is your app. So where you're normally building your app in um, Visual Studio, we've already done that for you. Uh, there's basically a switch where you go use the pre-built version or build it myself, at which point then you're like, you can tinker and play with it. Um, when Quick is launched, it does all of the sort of setup stuff you would expect. You don't have to worry about any of that. Um, and then it creates a Lua virtual machine, which runs the Lua code. Um, and there's a nice bit of separation between the stuff running in that VM for Lua and the raw C++ that's doing the rendering. So basically, there's like not a, not a bottleneck of Lua slowing down how fast your game runs. Um, we've done a lot of improvement on that as well <coughs> over our release phase. So you'll see if you play with the beta, certain things will slow down horribly, um, where in the release, they won't. Um, and then the launchpad basically just runs the C++ app um, and calls through to the normal deploy tool underneath for you. Uh, one thing in the launchpad, there is a deploy tool button. So basically, we support um, uh, iPhone, Android, Playbook, and BlackBerry 10 uh, directly in the launchpad. Um, but if you want to deploy to uh, like desktop or a TV or something, or you want to play with options that aren't in Quick, you can just click the deploy tool button, and it powers up the normal deploy tool, and you can just work like a standard Marmalade app. Uh, I think I've pretty much covered that. If um, you want to dig around inside, there's basically a nice folder for each bit of the, um, the implementation. And we ship all of that. Um, and what we'll be doing is basically putting it all up on GitHub. So you can just go and pull the repository down, uh, fork it, do what you want. Um, we're also now maintaining um, the Marmalade version of Cocos 2D itself. So if you go to the um, official Cocos 2D website, there's a Marmalade project. Um, it supports the latest 2.1 point something build. Um, and we're basically providing examples and guaranteeing that that will work. Um, but we're get, encouraging like community people to basically get on board and put stuff into that and you know improve it. So I'm going to skip through these a little bit. Um, you basically get the usual marmalade, no fuss support. Um, that's pretty much all that says. A nice thing is one thing I'm doing at the moment is integrating Score Loop. So I'm building an app just for fun. I actually st I started building it over Christmas when I was stuck on a train in the snow in Scotland, <coughs> and um, so I was just like, well, you know, I could sit here and listen to these awful people talking next to me, or I could just have a bit of fun and do some work. Um, so I started building an app. Um, I've been building basically a sort of um, a backwards pong game. So it's like pong where you avoid the balls and you have weapons. Um, and uh, it's all very kind of vector, vector graphics. So as I've been sort of developing it, it's getting more and more like a sort of terrible Atari arcade game from like the 70s, 80s. Um, I might pull that up in a minute if, if I've got a build that works. Um, but one thing I'm also doing is I'm doing a blog on it. So over the next couple of weeks, uh, once or twice a week, I'll basically just be posting to our website what I did, how I did it, um, what, what I learned. There'll be nice things like intros to Lua for people who don't know anything about Lua. Um, there'll be some stuff that's like, oh, in the beta, there's this odd little quirk I found. So here's how I did a, walk around, uh, a workaround for it. But in the release version, we'll be fixing it with this little improvement. So we want it to be really like sort of hands-on, getting people to, to help us out and us to like, sort of help people on the way. Uh, the downloads up online. There are docs online. Um, it's all pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, I'll show you my little quick build at the end, because I'm run, running low on time. Um, I was just going to cover quickly the sort of what we're doing this year. So 6.2 uh, had official BlackBerry 10 support. We added in-app billing for Playbook and BlackBerry 10, so you can now do payments on all the platforms we support, basically. Um, we've got our Windows Phone 8 Beta SDK, which is a separate download because we didn't want to sort of pollute the, the standard SDK with sort of beta implementations that require whole new tool chains and stuff. It doesn't quite work in the normal Marmalade way yet, but essentially you can build GLES games and push them straight to Windows Phone with it. Um, we'll have a, a release version of that pretty soon. Uh, the quick beta is a separate download, and the final one will be a separate download. And there's a new version of Scoreloop, Score Loop, which has official BB10 for Marmalade support. Um, and then the interesting ones will be the next couple of releases. So at the moment, um, with Marmalade, I was saying how Marmalade and the BlackBerry 10 uh, native SDKs are both very similar in terms of we have like very similar looking APIs. We have a GitHub repository. We're encouraging people to port and bring in all kinds of code. Um, the difference is basically that ours is cross-platform. So if you, if you use Marmalade, you can hit all the platforms, not just BlackBerry 10. Um, but BlackBerry 10 has a lot of nice little extras that we don't support. So we don't have support for Cascades yet. Um, we don't support um, web views. So on other platforms that we support, we have um, uh, like a web layer, so you can throw in HTML, JavaScript, and do hybrid apps. Um, 
this is all going to come to BlackBerry 10, basically, is what this slide says. So the first thing we'll do is extension support. So on uh, Android and iPhone, you can basically write native code and pull it into your game with a, a C++ uh, header for it. Um, so if you want, you could just put in something like Game Center or um, Android notifications or something that there isn't a, a cross-platform version of. Um, but if you want, you could make a cross-platform API out of it. So you can take you know, the billing API on all three platforms um, as extensions and have a bit of C++ code that gives you one interface to all three of those extensions. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is add that to BlackBerry 10. That'll mean you can start hacking away, throwing in bits of cascades, doing any of the native functionality that we don't support by yourself. Um, but we'll also start writing stuff with it. So we'll add the HTML5 JavaScript uh, web marmalade stuff. So you can have web views. You can integrate things like Facebook through the web. Because um, I, I believe BlackBerry 10 doesn't have a, a native Facebook SDK yet. So that would be an option that basically you can use the web to pull that in and start doing Facebook post to, post -to wall stuff within your app. Um, and then we'll do some native UI integration for Cascades. So at the moment, we have a uh, sort of a native UI abstraction layer that you do like add button, and it gives you an iPhone button or an Android button. Or what it'll do a Cascades one, basically. Um, <coughs> it's not um, magic works out of the box, because basically, if you want to make a UI app, you have to think. You need to think about what the user wants on a specific platform, how you're going to lay that out. But it does let you do like nice little bits of UI here and there um, to tie them into your app. And we'll also be doing some work to basically improve our UI support generally. Um, and that's basically it. We're down in the partner showcase um, at the bottom by all the snacks. Um, so if you want to come get a coffee or a donut and come and talk to us, we'll be there for the rest of the day. Um, we're demoing stuff on the um, Z10s. Uh, if anyone's got any questions about things that are broken or things that they'd like or that kind of thing, we're pretty receptive to ideas. Um, you can talk to Rich down the front here about licensing and anything like that if, if he's awake. Just. Um, but yeah, come find us and talk to us. I thought I would just finish, basically. Oh, there's an extra BlackBerry slide that's been added in. Um, I thought I would finish, basically, by just showing you a bit of my app and um, kind of extra bits and pieces that you can do. So if I close this down, this is, uh, this is wrong. Um, so it's reverse Pong, so wrong. Um, and it's missing its, uh, its nice little intro screen in this version. And this is running on the beta. So I've actually been building with the beta and then slowly transitioning over to the sort of straight out of Perforce release version. Um, so I now have like three versions of it, none of which quite work with various things. Um, this is the beta one. So it's set up exactly the same as before. I've just put my info in. I've made a little icon for it. Um, if I test it, maybe it will run. Maybe I've been hacking it too much. Over there. Yeah, so this is its uh, pretty rubbish little title screen. But um, basically, it looks like Pong. That transition doesn't work, does in the release. Um, you just avoid the balls if you, if you hit them. It's going to throw some kind of error. Give it a second. There we go. Um, let it wake up. So this, I know, is a, a bug in the beta that doesn't definitely not happen uh, and doesn't happen on device either. Um, but basically, you get hit, you lose points, you have weapons, so there's some nice little things like, it's all multi-touch, but it's pretty hard to do, show you on the PC, but it's got things like heat-seeking things. Uh, reversing people's controls kind of stuff. But these are all basically really simple. So the, the code for it is basically just doing things like set animation, um, rotate, stretch, skew, when, when animation is ended, destroy or create new things. So everything's just being like created dynamically on the spot. Um, and pushing it to a device is the same uh, as uh, with Marmalade. So just hit deploy on BlackBerry 10. And it's wrong down there. I'm sure which way around I've locked the screen. There we go. Um, and this may run quite slowly due to all of the debugging. It's basically printing every time anything happens. Uh, 
And as you can see, because the pixels are so small, it needs a little work on them. Um, but you can do two, two and a multi-touch. You can do two players on one device. I'll be adding things like score loop support with a single, single player version. Um, and some multiplayer sort of over the air live stuff. So it should give you a good idea of how this kind of thing is meant to work. I'll just kill myself just to show the death thing. But yeah, it's, and, and I found it really, really interesting to use because I've been doing a lot of like very low level programming for the last sort of year or two. Um, and it's really nice to go straight into something, you know, so simple and quick that you can just prototype and pull things together. It's pretty much unplayable at the moment as well. But, um, you know, I'll come later. So, right, that was it. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, we'll be down at the partner showcase. If anyone's got any questions now about anything to do with Quick or Marmalade or, you know, Blackberry 10 integration, then fire away. No? Cool. All right. Thank you very much, everybody.